What happens to your income tax returns after you drop them into the mailbox? Well, they end up here at the Internal Revenue Service, where hopefully the paperwork goes through quietly and unnoticed, and if you're lucky, that refund check gets put quickly into the mail. You can increase the odds on both those things happening if you use your computer to do your taxes. Today's sophisticated tax software is almost like having a CPA in your CPU. Today, we take a look at the latest in tax preparation software on this edition of the Computer Chronicles. Computer Chronicles is made possible in part by Datastorm Technologies, setting the standard in PC communications through the development of award-winning software such as Procom Plus, combining power, ease of use, and affordability to become the best-selling communication software in the world. And by PC Connection and Mac Connection, mail-order software and hardware peripherals for the PC and the Macintosh. And by Byte Magazine and Bix, the Byte Information Exchange. Welcome to the Computer Chronicles. I'm Stuart Chaffe. If you're doing what I'm doing right now, trying to do my 1991 federal income tax returns, you're probably going through the same mess, trying to figure out which of these gazillion tax forms from the IRS are the ones I ought to be using. You say, well, I've got a computer. I'll do my taxes on a computer. No problem. Well, you've simply shifted the decision to another level. You've got to now decide what tax preparation software to use. We've got J.K. Lasser's Your Income Tax. There is Tax Cut 1040. There is Easy Tax, or maybe you want to use Tax Prepare. We have TurboTax for Windows. We have Personal Tax Filer. There is Mac and Tax. There is Tax Cut Easy A. There is AM Tax. It goes on and on. There are at least 15 major tax prep programs on the market right now. So today, we'll try to help you. We'll take a look at what we think are the best tax preparation programs for DOS, for Windows, and for the Macintosh. Now, when you do your taxes on a computer, there's always that little thought, if I get audited, I can always say, the computer made the mistake. After all, that's what they always tell us. Well, what do the good people at the Internal Revenue Service think about all of this? We visited the IRS regional headquarters in Philadelphia to find out. There are many ways to file your tax returns these days. Fill in the forms and mail them, do them on your computer, or just punch in the information directly to the IRS on a touchtone phone. But using technology to do your taxes doesn't give you an excuse for making mistakes. The taxpayer is always responsible for their own tax return, regardless of what medium that they use, and that's what you're basically doing when, you're, when you sign your return. Um, and when you're, you're, you're talking about the taxware packages, it's still the information that the taxpayer gives to there. But for audit, you're no more or less subject to an audit filing this way than any other way. The IRS is experimenting with electronic means of filing because, like any other organization these days, it's looking for ways to do its work more efficiently. But when you have 100 million people sending you their paperwork the same night, the challenge is a big one. So the IRS is hoping taxpayers will use computers and telephones, and not just the mail, to file their returns. The IRS definitely wants uh, taxpayers to use uh, all these different alternatives. We're trying to make it less fearful, more, more comfortable. People are more comfortable at a PC, and, and it's just a, an alternative that an individual could use. Ten million people are expected to file their taxes electronically this year. At the moment, only professional tax preparers are authorized to send your returns directly from their PCs to the IRS. But the Internal Revenue Service is trying other ways to make tax time easier. You can now buy software that lets you do your taxes simply by answering some questions on the new Form 1040 PC. In Ohio, the IRS is now experimenting with telephone filing. You call a toll-free number, and with a touch-tone phone, just enter your wages, deductions, and withholdings. Each year, we try to add either a, an addition to the current program that we have or another alternative. And I do see that the system will be changing as people become more comfortable with PCs and have more, more um, personal computers in their home, become more comfortable with it. I, I see that this is, will be definitely a growing trend. Despite all the high-tech options, you still have to get an envelope and a stamp to complete your taxes. 
Whether you file by phone, by PC, or by mail, the IRS still insists that every taxpayer send in a signature form verifying the information on your tax forms. If you're working in the DAS environment, we're going to show you two tax preparation programs that may help. Here to help us are Jim McCardle, president of Ten Key Publishing, and also Terry Fleming of TimeWorks, Inc. Terry, let me start with you. Is the idea behind buying tax prep software that it's going to take the place of going to see your accountant, does it mean you do this now by yourself, or is this something you use with an association with a, a CPA or something? Yes, absolutely. In uh for someone with simpler returns, it can probably take the place of a lot of that. With someone with a more complex tax position, it'll go a long way to helping them get organized and get all their information together so they don't forget important deductions they might be entitled to. So you're saying even if you're going to go take your taxes to somebody to have somebody else do them, it still is useful to organize yourself using this kind of software? Absolutely. All right, Jim, let's, let's go to you now and take a look at... Uh, at your income tax, J.K. Lasser's your income tax, which I know you guys developed it, but it's yes. actually a Simon & Schuster software product. Run us through it and show us how you would use this. Uh, Stuart, the package can do a unlimited number of tax returns. Uh, here I'm going to pick one. And in this package here, we can enter data in one of two ways. One through the tax time saver module, where we can collect data Typically, this is done by someone who isn't that familiar with the tax forms themselves. So you don't know what form you need. You say, here's the kind of stuff I'm dealing with. That's correct. And it'll tell you what form to go it'll to. It'll tell you what form to go with. It'll okay. even take you to the right spot. Okay. So, for example, here the user wants to enter some real estate tax information. Gives them some help here referencing the J.K. Lasser Tax Guide, IRS Publication mm -hmm. 17, if he needs that help. Otherwise, he can go right to the tax form itself. And here he can see uh, real estate taxes on the Schedule A. Uh -huh. If he were felt fairly comfortable with the tax term preparation, the forms themselves, they can go right to the Schedule so A So you can itself. just pull out the form yourself if you know where you're going. That's correct. The uh, electronic filing uh -huh. started about two years ago. Uh, last year, over 7 million people filed the return electronically, huh. primarily to get the fast tax refund. Right. And our package supports this. The electronic filing, filing module is no extra cost, even though there is a per return charge on the filing itself. The advantage of the electronic filing module is it, it checks your return for errors before you send it to the IRS. Shows. And, and here we're doing it. We're validating the tax return. These validations are done by IRS instructions. Uh, how does it know what an error is? I mean, how does it do this? Well, the IRS gives us a certain okay. number so, of parameters. So I mean, you're looking for missing data, for example, exactly. which is an easy one. Exactly. If you, for example, uh, forgot to put a piece of information on a W-2, uh -huh. often what's forgotten is the employer ID number when they're filling out uh -huh. uh, W-2 information, they'll put in the wages of the tax withheld uh -huh. and forget about the okay, employer. So I basically won't let you leave out information that should have been in your tax That's return. That's correct. So uh, your return isn't kicked out by the IRS. Mm -hmm. You can fix it right on your desk. When you file online, you still have to mail in something, don't you? Some sort of signature or something? That's correct. The IRS Form 8453 yeah. is still required. Your W-2s are attached to that. Okay, briefly, Jim, what about planning ahead? Can you use something like this for tax planning? The, uh, we have a tax planning module in the package. and one of the most important parts of the package because uh, once you incur your data, you can't change your tax. Yeah, so this right. is what you would do throughout the year uh, to try to make the tax product more of a year-round product. And here in this tax planner, we have four different plans we support, four different situations. We can, we can bring over the tax information from the 1040 mm -hmm. package we just worked on, and at the very same time, we can go to different situations. In, uh, uh, in the second situation here, I have partnership income that's being added to my initial tax return to see how that would compare with right. uh, the first so year. So you can lay out different strategies for how you're going to deal with your finances. Uh, you can even adjust uh, the tax rate, as I understand, in this, mm -hmm. if that should change. That's correct. And then uh, if we were to do so, depending on what Congress may yeah. do or President Bush may do, we can change this tax rate right. and just in, in anticipation of what we think yeah. Congress will do. All right, Jim, if I can ask you to slide the keyboard over to Terry. And Terry, let's take a look at Easy Tax from TimeWorks. The title suggests ease of use. Is that the point in Easy Tax? Well, absolutely. Uh, easy provides a lot of benefits for both the uh, seasoned uh, tax preparer as well as the new uh -huh. user. What do we have up on the screen here? Well, when the program first starts up, it will inform you if you've passed any of the tax deadlines that are all set up within the program, as this one is calling our mm -hmm. attention now. And 
then you can simply go under the uh, tax deadline alarms if you want to take a closer look at what those might be. Mm -hmm. And you can turn them on and off selectively so if things are important to you so or not. It's got a built-in little reminder system. Absolutely, because some of these things are very critical and if you miss them you could uh -huh. be in big trouble. Uh, once you have established your taxpayer file, and we can work on multiple files as well, mm -hmm. uh, you have the option to enter data in a couple of different ways. If you're tremendously unorganized, but you just have piles of receipts, yeah, that's me. much okay. like me too, you've yeah. got the shoebox function. and You can just go down and, and look at each thing you know you made an alimony payment, okay. so it'll take you right into the proper So I have this kind form. of receipt, I don't know where it goes, tell me, and the software will just take you to the form. If you, if you know what it is, yeah. then you're all set. Okay. Um, you also have an option for your uh, quick entry worksheet, which if you're a little more organized and you did keep all of your wage information in one spot and so forth, this will let you go through by category mm -hmm. and put it in the proper okay. place. And again, it places <laughs> right. it on the form in the right place. Uh, so it helps tremendously with putting the information onto the forms, and then it's a matter of printing it out. And one thing that we can do as well is printing multiple tax returns, mm -hmm. and that's very beneficial if you're doing returns for someone else. Right. But the output quality of the, of the forms, a big benefit that EasyTax provides uh -huh. is that you don't need to spend any additional money on software or font cartridges. The exact replicas come right out of your LaserJet printer, mm -hmm. exactly as you see them here. Suppose you don't have a laser printer. You'll print on 9-pin and 24-pin dot matrix printers And you can send well. those forms right into the IRS? They're fully submittable. They're sign them at the bottom and send them in. Okay, quickly, what are the prices on these products? Uh, last year's your income tax. Seventy-four ninety-five. dollars okay. retail price. And that comes bundled with that book? Absolutely. Then. Okay, and what about Easy Tax from Time Ours Works? Ours is $79.95. Pretty close. All right, gentlemen, <laughs> thank you very much. One of the most popular categories of software now is personal finance software programs like Quicken, for example. And one benefit of these programs, they let you dump financial data directly into a tax preparation program. Here's a report. If you've been using your computer all year to keep track of your finances, you'll have a head start on doing your taxes. Many tax preparation programs let you import information directly from personal finance programs with just a few keystrokes. But you must be diligent about using the personal finance software throughout the year to keep a record of your income and expenses. The personal finance software in general encourages a discipline amongst people when you store your information on the computer. You have to decide um, you know, with any of these packages whether it's, you know, this is going to be a, a taxable income, whether it's you know, just some money you acquired some other way, um, what type of expense it has. And in that process, essentially what you're doing is laying the groundwork for your tax form later. Using personal finance software not only makes doing your income taxes easier at tax time, it can also help you plan your finances so as to minimize your tax liability. As you work with the software or as you work with your budget, um, you're looking at some, the software allows you to look at some of the tax implications of what you're doing in a fairly simplistic way. Using personal finance programs in conjunction with tax prep software can be a relatively painless way of dealing with your budget but the software can't do the job for you. The only sort of caveat to um, that painlessness is that no software package can prevent you from mistakes that you made when you entered the data in the first place. With Windows as popular as it is now, many tax prep software vendors are coming out with new Windows versions of their programs. Here to show us two of them are Alan Gleischer of Chipsoft and Eric Jacobson of Mecca Software. Eric, you have TaxCut for Windows now. A lot of us are familiar with TaxCut just as a DOS product. Is it the same TaxCut, basically? It, in essence, is the same product. It has the same forms and schedules. It has the same features, all the same feature set, the interview, the expert system. Uh, the only difference between the Windows product is that it takes advantage of all the Windows features, uh -huh. such as tile and iconize and all that kind of stuff. All right, Alan, let's try to get the product straight because these things keep on changing every year. You have TurboTax for Windows, which is really, last year, what you called Macintax for Windows, right? That's correct. And what we've done is we've incorporated a lot of the extensive online help features uh -huh. and ease of use features from uh, TurboTax for DOS into the product. All right, so we have TurboTax for Windows up on the screen and uh, show us how you'd start to use this, Alan. Well, the great thing about using a Windows product is the idea that it makes it so simple to use. Uh, we've really been working hard talking to our customers, trying to find out what kind of features they look for when they're doing their taxes. Notice right here, this is a quick 
three minute or four minute mm -hmm. tour of the product and it shows you all the different features that are available. For example, here's a uh, form that comes up and it'll show you the status bar right up here. For example, if you want to be uh -huh. what kind of information you're entering in there, if it's text or if it's data, it will tell you no matter where you are in the program what you're so you've doing. You've got the sort of mini online tutorial. Exactly. Right? I always like to see if I can use these things without ever opening the manual. So. Let me open up uh, and show you how we have different form sets here. Uh -huh. Most people use the 1040 form, right. but if you don't know what to do, just click on the help button, and again, no matter Helps where you are in the program, it tells you which one you okay. should be using. Okay, let's uh, open it up. Now you'll notice that when the form comes up on mm -hmm. the screen, that it is an exact replica of IRS forms. That's one of the beauty of using an a uh, graphical interface program. Right, so your, your strategy here with TurboTax is really work on the piece of paper replica as if you were working with real forms. Exactly, and that's one of the things that you have the ability to take advantage mm -hmm. using Windows. Let me show you some things here. Uh, for example, you have the ability to do real-time error checking in the program. Okay. So you're, you're filling in something? Filling in uh, different questions filing about uh, filing status. Uh -huh. And then uh, if I click on a spouse, notice here that it tells you that uh, on the 1040 okay. that should be blank. So it looks for internal inconsistencies as, exactly. as you work on this. Exactly. All right, what else can you show us, Alan? Uh, another thing is one of the beauties of working with an interface, graphical interface program, is you can open up multiple forms mm -hmm. at once. So be looking at different schedules at the same time. Exactly. Just really using all the, the all the yeah. forms are interactive. You can uh, click on a particular line item, and based upon that, the information that it flows to comes yeah. right up. All right. I want to ask you to get out of uh, TurboTax for Windows, if you would. Okay. And I want to turn to you, Eric, again, and go back to Tax Cut for Windows. You really take a different approach, don't you? You don't just sort of, you don't look at the form the way you do in this product. That's right. We do offer the ability to go in and look at specific uh -huh. forms and fill in a form line by line. But what we found is that people want a lot more help than just going through form by form. And so what we've incorporated this year into our product is what we call the interview. Mm -hmm. And the interview is a whole series of questions that are simple yes or no questions for the most part. Uh, that help you to prepare your taxes. So you've got okay. the little CPA in a box here. Exactly. Okay. The whole goal is to provide Dan Kane, who is our uh -huh. tax expert, right online inside okay. the product. Show us how it works. Okay. When we come in here, um, here we're on a form. We go into our what we call our interview, uh -huh. and we're going to continue the interview. Uh, I've entered in some sample data, and so I'm going to pick up a little bit where we left off. This interview topic covers interest. And here we say, do you have any interest? So the program's asking me, did I have interest income? Exactly. Okay. Now, if we say no, right. we'll notice that we go on to the next topic and we don't ask you anything about interest. Yeah. Here we're now into dividends. But if we back up and we answer yes that we have interest here, and we say yes, we go into a series of questions asking about interest income. Now, suppose I don't understand the question. I see you have highlighted words. I can just sort of call up a, a definition of those That's words. exactly right. We can click right here, you know, what is an interest item, and here we'll okay, define okay. exactly what right, an so interest item I, is. All right, so suppose I did have interest. What do, what do we do then? Here we'll put in that we got some interest from First Bank, mm -hmm. and we say okay. And then the next question asks us, uh, how much was the interest? You know, was it life insurance, right, U.S. Right. bond, and again, okay. you can get help. Here we'll enter in that we got $1,234 worth of interest. Mm -hmm. We say okay. And we're down, now done. Oh, is there, are, there any, are there any exceptions? Right. We say no. Okay. And now we're done with the item on interest. If we go to the tax form, we jump to the tax form, it'll pull up Schedule B where interest is recorded, and uh -huh. you'll see that that item from First Bank is reflected so right there. So I never even had to go to the form and fill in the data just by answering the question. Exactly. For me. It fills in all the forms for mm -hmm. you right, mm -hmm. right behind you as okay. you're filling in the interview questions. Then, once you've completed this interview, we suggest that you go into what we call our auditor. And our auditor checks for several different kinds of things. It looks for inconsistencies. Mm -hmm. It provides tax planning advice. It checks for red flags that may cause an IRS audit. Um, and here you'll see that in our sample return, we've pulled in data, and it provides a tax tip that you make over $60,000. You should invest in tax-free bonds. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Here you should invest in an IRA. You should see if you have refunds of state taxes. Uh, here's an audit flag, taxes paid exceeded adjusted right, gross right. income. Two different programs, two different approaches, and, and they're really very powerful programs. That's both right. of them. Where are we at prices on these two things? TurboTax for Windows. Uh, it's priced at ninety nine ninety five, but you can find it at retailers for significantly less. <laughs> right, and tax cut for Windows. <laughs> the same price, ninety nine yeah. ninety five. All right, gentlemen, thank you very much. All right, what about the Macintosh? Well, there aren't too many choices out there, but we'll show you what there is when we come back. So don't go away.
If you're a Macintosh user and you want to do your taxes on your computer, it's pretty much Macintax or nothing. Back with us to demonstrate Macintax again, wearing his Mac hat now, is Alan Gleiser of Chipsoft. Uh, why, why is there no competition out there for you guys with Macintax? Well, there's been some other products out there in the past, but they haven't been able to uh, compete with Macintax because of the quality of the product. Mm -hmm. the, uh, the ability to use this program and have all the forms right on the screen is really a mm -hmm. nice feature. Now, as we explained earlier, a TurboTax for Windows is kind of Macintax. They're very similar products. Show us what you can do here on the Mac version of Macintax. Well, this is the same program that everybody's used and learned and loved over the years, mm -hmm. but except one big difference. We've included a tremendous amount a lot of, of help uh -huh, to make uh -huh. the product a lot easier. Let me show you here. We'll go into uh, K1 Summary Partnerships. Notice mm -hmm. that it can handle partnerships, right. corporations. Uh, all the forms are incorporated into passing information between each other. So this and is actually a worksheet, not, not the form in which you can develop the information you should be putting into the actual form? Exactly. Take a look here. If you, uh, you're in a particular line item in the program, uh -huh. you don't know what uh, you should do next, hit Consult. Consult will come up and give you information mm -hmm. uh, about that particular line item. Notice here that there are additional items that are embedded in the help system. So click on that and it will take you deeper uh -huh. in and give uh -huh. you more information. While we're, while we're in the uh, partnerships or the, mm -hmm. the uh, K1 worksheet form here, I want to say that uh, we've really enhanced the ability to do uh, K1's partnerships, amortization, and depreciation. So, so Macintax would not be limited just to the individual doing your, your, your wages That's type right. of tax Partnerships, return. fiduciaries, small business could and use corporations, ah. exactly. Okay, what else? Uh, also, I'd like to show you here that uh, on the screen we have a uh, text uh, input mm -hmm. field here. So if you move around the program, you'll notice that it tells so it you that it's text, text or, numbers, or yeah. that it should be numbers, or that it's a calculated field uh -huh. uh, within the program. Well, that's helpful. You know what kind of number that is. Where in the past you that's didn't right. always know that. Move the forms around, and you can get into another worksheet here, and it makes it real simple. Let me uh, open up here the uh, health insurance form. Mm -hmm. You'll notice that uh, you are able to put in an unlimited amount of itemized deductions, and you enter that information in here. Mm -hmm. Okay, tab over and put some numbers in there. Okay, and now let's close it up and you'll see that all the information has flowed into all the other forms within the product. Uh -huh. So again, you enter the data in the worksheet, the worksheet automatically transfers the data into the actual form for exactly. you. Exactly. Another nice feature that we have, if we go back into the worksheets uh -huh. here, to open this up and bring this up right here, is the idea that you can uh, cross-reference information and try and find out where the information is flowing throughout the product mm -hmm. through different forms, through different worksheets and notice here that it says partnership right. uh, name, you didn't put the right information mm -hmm. in there. Mm -hmm. Alan, what's the deal on, on upgrading? The problem with tax software is every year you have to buy the thing all over again. I, I, I buy Mac and tax now to do my 91 taxes. What happens a year from now when I want to do my 92 taxes? Well, what happens is, is the company makes available uh, the product the following year mm -hmm. at a special upgrade price. It has all the new features in the product. A lot of people try and buy it early so they can uh, take right. advantage of uh, tax planning before the end of the year. The latest forms and so on. Right, right. but it has, uh, it has the ability to go through and do some tax planning and take mm -hmm. your information from yeah. the prior year. All right, thanks very much again. Good. That's our look at tax preparation software. Stay tuned now for this week's computer news on Random Access. In the random access file this week, Hewlett Packard has entered the retail software market for the first time with an updated version of its New Wave desktop environment. New Wave 4.0 is now fully compatible with Windows. It offers enhancements such as drag and drop and intelligent object agents. New Wave has one nice feature which no longer limits file names to eight characters. New Wave will accept up to 32 characters. IBM has officially unveiled its new color laptop computer. The numbers are big, 11 pounds, 11 by 13 inches and a list price of $5,995.
Microsoft has released Excel 4.0. The update features autofill, auto format, and the ability to read Lotus 123 macros. Excel 4.0 also features the new Microsoft Wizard concept to help novice users and drag and drop data entry. Microsoft has also flexed its muscles in the database field by merging with Fox Software. That puts the highly rated Fox Pro into the Microsoft stable. Well, Borland isn't sitting still with its new DBase acquisition. Borland has just announced a new version of DBase 4, release 1.5. The upgrade price is $99. Macintax still holds the number one slot in Macintosh software sales, that according to Mac Connection. Salient's auto doubler is second. Rounding out the top ten, Microsoft Word, the Berkeley System screensavers, and more utilities. The Software Publishers Association handed out its annual software awards last week. There were 23 winners. Among the top winners were Quicken, Simant, Lemmings, KidPick, and QuickTime. A company called Cyrix says it's taking on Intel with its own 486 clone. Cyrix says its 486 CPU will offer the same performance at half the price. Intel is currently suing Cyrix for patent infringement. Well, finally, Grid has announced the world's first wearable computer. It's a three-pound pen-based system called the Palm Pad that can be worn on a belt, on your wrist, or around your neck. And that's it for this week's Computer Chronicles. I'm Maria Gabriel. Computer Chronicles is made possible in part by Datastorm Technologies, setting the standard in PC communications through the development of award-winning software such as Procom Plus, combining power, ease of use, and affordability to become the best-selling communication software in the world. And by PC Connection and Mac Connection, mail-order software and hardware peripherals for the PC and the Macintosh. And by Byte Magazine and Bix, the Byte Information Exchange. Video cassette copies of this program are available. Computer Chronicles also publishes a companion newsletter containing details on products demonstrated, plus background information on program topics. To order a video cassette or a subscription to the newsletter, call 1 800 366 9484 or write Computer Chronicles. Please specify program subject for tapes.